Hello, I'm Jorge Molina, immigration attorney based in Dallas, Fort Worth, and serving clients worldwide. Hi, my name is Alan Perez, criminal defense attorney, also based in Dallas, Fort Worth area, serving clients uh, all over the state and in federal court. Guys, and today we have the first of what I hope would be many videos in which we're discussing the intersection of immigration and criminal law, crimmigration. Um, and we will start with the seminal case of Padilla v. Kentucky. So, Alan, what happened in Padilla v. Kentucky? So Padilla v. Kentucky, uh, in a nutshell, is a case about a, a man who had been here most of his life. Um, an immigrant from Honduras who was a legal permanent resident, served in the U.S. military, and like I said, been here most of his life, living in Kentucky, and unfortunately caught a criminal case uh, where he was transporting marijuana in the back of a trailer. Um, went to court, had an attorney. The attorney got him a deal um, where if he pled guilty, he was going to receive a lesser sentence. The attorney told him, nothing's going to happen to you immigration-wise you'll be fine. And that was not the case. Went to the Supreme, uh, was ended up put in deportation proceedings, if I'm not mistaken, uh, appealed, went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court held that lawyer, criminal defense lawyers need to advise their clients that there could be the possibility of consequences with immigration, uh, depending on how they plea or how they resolve cases. Before, we didn't have a duty to do that. You know, we had to tell clients, hey, you could lose your law license, you could lose your medical license, you could lose your right to vote, uh, have firearms, etc. cetera, um, that we never really had to tell people about immigration consequences. Now, we don't necessarily have a duty to tell them everything, write a report, do this very deep dive, but we have to let them know, hey, heads up, something could happen. George. Okay, well, um, all right, Alan. So, um, Mr. Padilla was in um, criminal proceedings now, what would you have done differently um, from this or from the lawyer that he had now that you know this rule? So I will never claim to be an expert on immigration. It is a very, very difficult uh, branch of law, um, as you are aware. Um, and I would never like to step on your toes and say I know what I'm doing or pretend I know immigration law. So what I would do in that position is reach out to an immigration attorney and have my client do the same and, and figure out what could happen, would happen, what's a better route, or, you know, figure out if what we're doing is okay, immigration laws. Okay, beautiful. And yeah, and, and, and that's what most, you know, criminal defense attorneys do now, uh, because an institution like that. So in Mr. Padilla, guys, if you get caught with a truckload of marijuana, <laughs> and literally. Not, so literally, he, he was a commercial truck driver. Right. And it was it was a truck. It was tons of marijuana, um, you know, and you plead guilty to that. Um, you're automatically deportable. And it doesn't matter what he was a bit, um, Vietnam vet. 40 years in the U.S. as a lawful resident. All his family live in the U.S. It does not matter because it's an aggravated felony. He had no defense in immigration court. And no means of coming back to the U.S. So he was screwed based on that deal. You'd be surprised how often that happens. Uh, I see it all the time in criminal court where my clients have been here a long time. They, they, they have some kind of legal status, whether it be TPS, uh, legal permanent resident, DACA, whatever. And then they catch a case and they're like, well, I'll be fine. I can be here, right? I have permission to be here. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not the case. Now, I may not be able to advise you 100% of what will happen, but lucky for me, I have you. And I, you know this because I call you, text you, George, what's going to happen? Can you talk to my client, please? And hey, people don't know or they don't think about it. Sometimes, unfortunately, criminal defense lawyers don't either, but certain cases, depending on how you resolve, will affect them, even down to Class C's, as you've told me, with Class C assault family members, Class C theft, Class C uh, PIs, et cetera. Right, yeah, and... You know, and in, in those cases, um, you know, it's important to know the immigration background of the, of the client, right? So whether they're lawful residents or have no status, it's important, right? Um, because where a lot of the analysis that you do with clients that are U.S. citizens, you're looking at 
well, you know, how can I diminish the time in jail or beat the charge with immigrants who are looking at, well, am I going to lose my status or are they going to deport me? So, um, Alan, so what will you um, what we say to someone who is not a citizen of the U.S. who's facing a criminal case? So somebody in that position with a case pending, I always try to obviously look at the case, review the discovery, the evidence, and figure out what I can do. Now, obviously, my number one goal is always try to get all the cases dismissed, right? Obviously, it benefits them, benefits me. That's the ideal outcome for everybody. Now, if I can't get a case dismissed and the facts aren't in my favor, I try to negotiate and try to get a good deal where obviously it's going to be the best for my client where they're not going to wind up in jail, uh, a very long probation. Uh, but also with somebody that's not a citizen, I also need to consider, well, wait, how is this going to affect them immigration wise? Right. And like I said earlier, I'm not an expert in that. That's why I, I refer them to you. And I say, Hey, I tell my clients all the time, you need to contact an immigration lawyer, make sure you know, because I can only tell you the criminal aspect, right? That I can tell you without a doubt, this is what's going to happen. Your case ends here. No more jail or the jail or a fine or whatever. It may be that I work out, but I can't advise them fully about their immigration consequences. But I tell them, you need to make sure you know, because this could affect you. Maybe we'll be done here in court today, but this could affect you down the road when you need to renew your DACA, renew your residency, et cetera. Okay. So, um, I want to ask you, so whenever you're consulting with an immigration attorney about the immigration consequences, what are you hoping to hear or what are you what do you need to get out of the immigration attorney? Is it, um, you know, what plea should you're going to take? Is it just the consequences? What is it that you're hoping that a good immigration attorney will tell you? What I'm hoping they'll tell me is, hey, this deal that you worked out will hopefully not affect him, right? He won't be, you know, deemed deportable, if that's the proper term, or he'll be able to renew his his residency still, or he'll be eligible in the future to apply for citizenship. That's what I'm hoping I hear when I tell them, hey, I was able to work out this deal. Um, the details are X, Y, Z. What do you think? What's your opinion? And I, that's that's what I hope to hear when I talk to him, that it won't affect him, right? Unfortunately, that's not always the case. And sometimes, you know, we can only do so much from the criminal aspect, right, to avoid prison time or avoid very long probations. And even then, I can still sometimes get a reduction or get uh, a better deal. But unfortunately, sometimes it'll still have effects on them immigration wise. But that, again, that's what I discussed with the immigration attorney. And they they're the ones that inform me, hey, this is how it'll affect them, how it'll affect them, when it'll affect them. And I make sure my clients are aware of that. OK, oh, beautiful. So whatever it's the other way around. Right. And I and someone with a criminal charge says, hey, I'm facing this, but I want to talk to you before you know I'm convicted or anything. Um, what I what I often do is um, just send them to a good criminal defense attorney. Right. Because um, some some cases, regardless of how good the plea is or the probation or something, if you're guilty. You're going to be deported period, right? So Mr. Padilla is a good example, right? So, you know, if they found you with a truckload of marijuana, then the only plea deal that they're giving you, you're convicted, but you're going to do probation. Let's say just you do time served, right? He's still going to be deportable. So often what I say to, uh, you know, people in this situation is, you know what, if you're going to spend money, spend money with a criminal defense attorney. Because the only chance for you to stay here is to beat the charge, right? So often um, what guys or what people need is just good, honest, open advice um, that speaking with an experienced attorney will uh, will, will get you there, right? Um, that reminds me of my uh, the case I had earlier this week that you and me talked on. I have a new client, not to get too much into details, but he's got a serious felony. Uh, Went to go visit him in jail. Unfortunately, he has an ice hold. He wants to bond out, go to immigration because he thinks he can get out and then we'll fight the case on the outside. Uh, I was lucky and fortunate enough to be able to talk to you about it, touch base with you. And you told me and my client, I don't suggest you doing that. It's not going to go well. Beat the charge first, then we'll go to immigration and then we can fight in immigration. That I remember that very well. Uh, got my cell phone, took the call 
and took me two minutes to let them know there's no way, no way you're gonna get a I, you're gonna get a bond from either eyes or the immigration court. So you're gonna waste your money. And then worse off, in some situations, even if you pay the bail and you have a pending charge, ICE will take you, put you in removal proceedings, they're gonna order your deportation, and then your criminal case remains pending. So you, in essence, you abscond, you know, you're, you're a fugitive from justice while you're being deported. So again, folks, it's very important to talk to an experienced immigration attorney that understand, or attorneys that understand how immigration and criminal law intersect. Again, I'm Jorge Molina. I'm Alan Perez. Thank you for watching.